I am obsessed with the Criterion Collection. Lights, camera, action! But what is it about them that's so irresistible? There are plenty of other Blu-ray and DVD labels. Why should this Fantastic Mr. Fox be any more special than this Fantastic Mr. Fox? Maybe it has something to do with the cover art. Or the spine numbers. Maybe it's the booklet of essays that comes with each film. Or the extensive special features in every release. Criterion were the ones who created the audio commentary, after all. I'm going to take you on a lecture tour of King Kong as you watch the film. Maybe it's all of this together. They're like a gateway drug. You try it just once or twice and get hooked when you realize there's a whole new world of cinema out there just waiting to be discovered. And in my eyes, they can do no wrong. Even including two of Michael Bay's movies is kind of amazing. And the fact that they've been able to do all of this and do it successfully is fascinating. People have been talking for years about how physical media has been dying. And yet everywhere, we've been seeing pockets of niche interests gaining new audiences. Independent bookstores, vinyl records, film photography. It's true that Blu-ray and DVD sales are at an all-time low and probably won't ever bounce back. And yet that story of decline is the exact opposite for the Criterion Collection, who have never been more popular than they are right now. An entire culture of fandom has grown up around the company that can't get enough of their releases. Collection videos, shopping halls, the Criterion Closet. Mecca. There's so much to see and discover. Daisuke Beppu built his own Criterion Closet. We have made a kind of makeshift Criterion Closet. It's a club, it's a clique, it's a cult. It's all of these and so much more and the absolute gold standard on the top of everything else. And at the center of it all for so many of us is the biannual 50% off sale at Barnes & Noble. And they say Christmas only comes once a year. It's the season of cheer, it's the season of merriment, and the season of giving. So I'm gonna give myself the gift of Criterion. Today is day one of the Criterion Collection sale of Barnes & Noble. I love the smell of consumerism in the morning. I was worried they wouldn't have it, but they do. Okay, life is good now. I'm just gonna start going through alphabetically. So up here. Every time I come to one of these sales, I always look at Battle of Algiers. I saw this when I was in college and I thought it was fantastic. And every time I come to the sale, I think, oh, I should get Battle of Algiers. And then I, I always end up putting it back. We'll, put, we'll make a pile, that's what we'll do. We're gonna make the pile definite, maybe, okay? That's what we're gonna do. Black Narcissus, that's a maybe. I just watched this about a year ago and it's wonderful. Makes a great companion piece with uh, Dr. Strangelove. I have this, I just wanna show it high and low. It, it may be blasphemy, but this is Kurosawa's best film. Ah. I wanted to get um, Brighter Summer Day, but they only have it on DVD, and I need, I need it on Blu-ray. Edward Yang would rise from the grave and kill me if I didn't get it on Blu-ray. This is my wallet at the beginning of the Barnes & Noble sale. Look at all that sweet, sweet YouTube cash. If you wanted, you could craft an entire business course around the Criterion Collection and the brand that they've cultivated. See, we're at a point within film culture where brands are increasingly more popular than products. Pick anyone you want and you can see this. More and more, it seems as though the films and the people who made them are secondary to the name and logo of the company behind them. Well, you talked about the original trilogy and, and it's like people responded to those movies with such fandom and excitement because they liked the movies. Mm -hmm. And now that's inverted now they're responding it's to more about the brand the brand so so you have this like this like weird flock mentality sheep mentality of of people that are just like blind fans to this it's almost like a, a cult now and the fact is i'm just as guilty of this kind of fan mentality as anyone else is 
I may think it's weird when Star Wars neckbeards get choked up at the Lucasfilm logo, but you better believe that I'll be in floods of tears when Criterion announces that they're releasing Children of Men. Come on, just do it already, I need it. Why else would I have purchased their Blu-ray of Roma when I could turn on Netflix and watch it any time? Same with The Irishman. Why did I buy this twice? Because I'm a Criterion loyalist. If you ever doubt your own artistic ambitions, your own artistic talent, just remember that Yasujiro Ozu made an entire movie about farting and that it's incredible. I'll just get two. Wait, no, three. <sighs> okay, everybody's getting Criterions for Christmas this year. Thank God for that brave soul who leaked the start date on Reddit. Wait, is there another stimulus check coming? I could get a few more if there is. Um, never mind. The first step is to establish the kind of image that you want. And if there's one single ingredient that's key to Criterion's image, then it's... Prestige. 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 You could nab this unexciting regular edition DVD on Amazon for about five bucks. Whereas, even at 50% off, the Criterion version is going to run you three times that. But the difference between them is everything. It's the first class seat you pass by on the way to coach. It's the supercar you sat in one time and were afraid to breathe wrong for fear of breaking it. It's caviar and Pinot Grigio from Whole Foods compared to another frozen pizza from the 99 cent store. And it's not just anything that gets the label. Films have to be worthy of the Criterion C, not the other way around. It's an honor, it's a privilege, and it's a better Academy Award than the Academy Awards themselves. And that image is completed by their premium pricing structure. See, with Criterion, it's not about competitive pricing, but the exact opposite. In fact, the very worst thing about them is arguably the greatest thing working for them. A full-price $40 Blu-ray is too expensive for most Criterion fans, let alone the average consumer. Therefore, what we have here is a high-class luxury product that most people primarily purchase during the 50% off sales, which, between Barnes & Noble and Criterion's own 24-hour flash sales, only occur maybe four times a year. There's nothing special about buying this if I can do it anytime I want, but there's automatically something special if I have to wait for a specific time of the year to buy this. Sure, it's a risky strategy, but if scarcity creates demand, then a pricing structure like this helps create a sense of value. Ah, someday. And it's turned their sales, Barnes & Noble in particular, into bona fide events. And it's the reason why my wallet looks like this at the end of the Barnes & Noble sale. Best thing Roger Ebert ever wrote. Just kidding, but he did write this. I've never seen it, and I'm, and I'm scared. <laughs> Maybe not today. JT, do you have any Criterions? I don't. You don't? I'm gonna find you one. Okay. Find you one to start with. Okay, here we go. Here. This is a four-hour movie about a French woman cleaning her apartment. It's riveting. A good marketing strategy spreads the word and can help create a sense of community. I get excited around the middle of every month since I know they're going to drop new title announcements. And even though it was just a number, all of us speculating what spine number 1000 would be was kind of totally fun. It was like predicting who Supreme Leader Snoke would be, except we weren't horribly disappointed by the answer. And if nothing else, I'll never be uninterested when they upload a new closet video. I mean, just look at it. It's like Disney World for art house snobs. You know, Fellini to me was, uh, we used to take LSD and see his movies all the time. But you have to be careful not to commit any cardinal sins. I may have said that they can do no wrong earlier, but imagine if the quality of their releases dropped, or if they announced the acquisition of something like, I don't know, Suicide Squad. <coughs> That'd be a pretty major yikes. And finally, at the heart of it all has to stand a company's message. It may all just be mindless consumerism, and yes, they're a company whose sole concern at the end of the day is making a profit, but what they stand for is what's really going to grab and maintain a consumer base. And for Criterion, well, they print it right onto every title they put out. But I think it's also more than that. See, what I see them standing for is the very highest standard which, more and more, 
seems to be in direct contrast to so much of what's going on these days. And good lord, is it easy to be cynical about the state of cinema right now. Movie theaters are dying. Streaming is sucking away our souls. Warner Brothers are letting AI dictate what films they make. Even if your franchise keeps flopping, just try, try again. Whatever, they'll see it. Disney announced 500 new Star Wars shows. 800 Marvel movies. The new Lion King made over a billion dollars. Captain Marvel was considered social justice. The whole cinematic landscape is changing. Is that CGI deepfake of James Dean still happening? You're tearing me apart! How many streaming services do I need? I have to watch it. I'll be out of the loop. People care more about trailers you than the actual movie. You can't hardly movies anymore without being distracted by the lovers and finding themselves to just shut up. But maybe it isn't as bad as all that. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Theaters will come back, good movies are still being made, and Criterion is doing wonders with their own lovely little patch of real estate. And maybe that's enough. Okay, we can stop recording. I think I'm good now. Now I do have to make a decision. And if mindless franchises continue to take over everything, or even if the industry itself crumbles and all of cinema dies, well then, we can all ride out the apocalypse with Kurosawa and Bergman and Powell and Pressburger, and maybe it won't be so bad. Thank you guys so much for watching. This video is brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of classes on topics like animation, photography, and so much more, all taught by experts and professionals. If you've been watching my channel for a while, then you probably know that I'm constantly trying to push the look of each video. I always want the animation and the motion graphics to look better and cleaner, and to do that requires constantly learning new skills. If you're like me and you felt thoroughly intimidated by Photoshop, I'd highly recommend Libby Vanderplug's class on creating animated illustrations. It's a wealth of knowledge. Check it out. Whether you're a beginner or a professional, Skillshare is an invaluable resource, and it's an amazing gift to give for the new year. And right now, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description box below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you for watching the videos here at the Royal Ocean Film Society this year. I hope each and every one of you have a wonderful holiday season. I'm gonna go have way too many Christmas cookies and watch all of the Criterions I just bought. I'll see you guys in the new year.